If I were to ask you what your favourite music making apps on iOS are, chances are one of, if not all three of these would get a mention. And with good reason, they're all fantastic. Well, Moog have returned to the world of iPad music making, this time with digital recreations of their insanely popular Moger Foger pedals. I've teamed up with the lovely folks at Moog for this video, where we'll have a look at how these effects work and, more importantly, hear how they sound. Plus, I'll share what I think is the standout feature of these apps that make them a properly game-changing addition to the world of iOS music making. There are eight apps in the Moger Foger collection, all of which are really faithful digital recreations of Moog's famous modular synthesizer inspired pedals from the late 90s and 2000s. The Moger Foger effects plugins include the MF101S low pass filter. This is the classic Moog ladder filter with an envelope follower for dynamic control. The MF102S ring modulator. This is a wide range carrier oscillator paired with an LFO for effects from soft tremolo through far out clangorous ring modulation tones. The MF103S 12 stage phaser. This is a descendant of the vibrant 1970s rack mounted Moog phaser with an onboard LFO. The MF104S analog delay. This is a rich full body delay and modulation circuit that has remained highly sought after to this day. The MF105S Murph, a groundbreaking effect combining a resonant filter bank with a pattern generator and skewing envelope for vibrant animation of an incoming sound. The MF107S Frequency Box, a box of gnarly synced VCO sounds with envelope and FM modulation. The MF108S Cluster Flux, careful saying that one, a flexible processor that can modulate between chorus, flanging and vibrato. And the MF109S Saturator, a powerful saturation tool based on the classic Moger Foger input drive stage that adds warmth, distortion and compression to any sound. Quick note before we move on, I'll be demoing the Moger Foger apps in both GarageBand and Logic Pro for iPad. This is because it's a wee bit easier to showcase some of the more advanced features found in these Moger Foger effects in Logic Pro. Right, let's take a closer look at these bad boys then. Kicking us off is the MF101S Low Pass Filter, a brilliant way to mellow out sounds or add some resonant overtones. The filter section contains three controls, a cutoff which opens and closes the filter, the two pole slash four pole switch selects whether the incoming signal passes through half the filter or the entire filter, and the resonance knob changes the way the filter sounds. The envelope section contains a mount, follow rate and mix controls. The amount knob determines how much of the envelope signal is used to open and close the filter. The follow rate knob controls the smoothness of the envelope's response. And the mix control crossfades from the input signal to the filtered signal. In the center of the plugin are drive and output controls, as well as a button that links both controls. There's also level and envelope LEDs. And there's an active foot switch button to turn the effect on or off. There are a selection of presets at the top if you just want to dive into some pre-made patches. Plus, 
Plus there are some additional settings available. You can also get access to the back panel of the plugin up here, where you can link up other Mogar Fogar effects present in your project. More on that a bit later on. The Mogar Fogar Ring Modulator is a great way to add smooth, slow tremolo effects or wibbly wobbly chaos to your audio. The LFO section contains an amount knob, which controls how much the LFO will affect things. A square slash sine waveform switch selects either the square waveform or sine waveform that the LFO produces. And the rate knob controls how much the LFO oscillates. In the modular section is a mix knob which crossfades from the direct signal to the signal from the ring modulator output. The low high switch and frequency control work together. The frequency knob has two calibration ranges, 0.6 Hz to 80 Hz and 30 Hz to 4 kHz. The low high switch setting determines which range is on. In the center you have drive and output controls, a link button for the two, plus level and LFO LEDs. There are two foot switch buttons here, the LFO sync enables the LFO rate to sync to the project tempo. and the active switch turns the effect on or off. You have the same controls up top as the other Mogar Fogar effects, including presets, advanced controls and CV options. The Mogar Fogar 12 stage phaser is a digital recreation of a stone cold classic. More powerful and flexible than pretty much any other phaser effect I've ever come across, this sounds great on a huge amount of different instruments and sounds. In the phaser section you'll find a sweep control which moves the frequency response pattern through a 6 octave range, a 6 stage slash 12 stage switch, and a resonance control which changes the height and sharpness of the frequency response peaks. In the LFO section you will find an amount control which varies the depth of phaser modulation and a rate control plus low slash high switch. The rate control varies the LFO speed over a 250 to 1 range. When the left switch is on low, the rate control varies the speed from 0.01 Hz to 2.5 Hz. When the left switch is on high, the rate control varies the speed from 1 Hz to 200 and 50 hertz. Oh, <laughs> 
the middle section are the usual suspects, drive, output, and a link button for them both, plus level and LFO LEDs. At the bottom of the plugins UI are LFO sync and active foot switch buttons. You have the same controls at the top here, unsurprisingly, as all the other effects, including presets. advanced controls, and yes, CV options as well. Analog delays don't get much better than this. The Moger Foger analog delay is technically a digital delay, replicating the original Bucket Brigade analog delay used in the hardware Moger Foger 104 pedal. It recreates the quirks and distinct tonal characteristics of that original pedal, but can be switched to use the transparent tones of digital with a switch, combining the best of both worlds. In the delay section, the time control sets the length of delay based on the short slash long switch setting. In short mode, the delay time changes from approximately 8 milliseconds to 400 milliseconds. In long mode, the available span is from approximately 16 milliseconds to 800 milliseconds. The feedback sets the amount of delay that is outputted. In the LFO section, you can select between six wave shapes for delay time modulation. You can select from sine, triangle, square, ramp, sawtooth, and sample and hold modulation. The rate adjusts the LFO rate from 0.05 Hz up to 50 Hz, and the amount knob controls the amount of LFO modulation of the delay time. In the middle you'll find drive and output controls, as per usual. There's also a mix knob and level LED here too. And there are three foot switch buttons on the bottom of the UI. Time Sync enables the delay time to synchronize with the project tempo. Active turns the effect on or off. And Time Sync enables the LFO rate to sync to the project tempo. Up the top here, you'll find presets. advanced controls and those CV options again. We'll get to those, I promise. Don't worry. The MF-105S Murph is probably my favourite Moger Foger effect, and probably also the hardest to explain, but I'll give it a go. The original pedal contained two basic functions, 
an 8-band array of resonant filters that can be voiced for bass or mid-frequency response, and a pre-programmed animation module that generates sequences of envelopes that modulate the levels of the 8 filters. The MF-105S app captures not only the distinctive sound of the original, but also the organic way in which the parameters interact to create a weird and wonderful creative experience. The Murph contains eight filters that can be configured for bass or mid-frequency voicing by the frequency slide switch on the front panel. In bass voicing, the lowest filter acts as a low-pass filter, with a cutoff frequency of 110 Hz. This is ideal for bass players or bass sounds that need to retain the presence of all their lowest frequencies. The remaining seven filters are resonant filters with center frequencies that range from 160 up to 1800 Hz. In the mids voicing, all eight filters act as resonant filters, with center frequencies that range from 200 up to 3400 Hz. The mids voicing is really good for processing sounds with dense mid-frequency harmonics like guitars, vocals or synthesizer sounds. When the LFO slider switch is in the ON position, an LFO shifts the frequencies of the filters as a group up and down automatically. You can use the envelope control to change the shape of the filters below it. The timing and sequence of the envelopes is determined by the pattern selected. Stay with me here. You can select from 12 different patterns using the patterns control. Now you can find and edit each pattern by selecting one with the pattern knob, then tapping the settings cog at the top of the plugin's UI. Before the other advanced settings for the Murph is the pattern editor. Here you can make changes by tapping individual points. Or by tapping, holding and dragging to turn on or off entire rows. Each of these horizontal lines corresponds to one of the controls in the filter section in the plugin's main user interface. Faster rate settings decrease the envelope times and slower rate settings increase the envelope times. There are also drive, mix, output and link controls along the top of the plugin's user interface. And there are three foot switch buttons at the bottom of the plugin's UI. Clicking the reset switch resets the current pattern in the pattern generator back to step one. Active turns the effect on or off. And sync enables the pattern generator to sync 
to your project's tempo. Yes, it's a lot, but taking a bit of time to get to know the 105S Murph is really, really worthwhile, as the kind of sounds you can create with this are phenomenal. It's really, really a fantastic effect. If you do find all of that a bit overwhelming, the Murph also comes with plenty of presets. as well as the other controls found in all the other Mogar Fogar effects. The MF107S Freakbox allows users to modulate the internal oscillator with their input signal. Throw in some FM synthesis and the ability to add a whole lot of Mogar Fogar warmth into the mix, and you're left with a truly unique effect app. In the VCO or voltage controlled oscillator section, you'll find the waveform control, which is used to set the waveform of the VCO. The basic waveforms here are triangle, sawtooth, square and pulse. The sync off slash on switch engages the freak boxes hard sync function, causing the VCO to be re-triggered by the input signal. The frequency control is used to adjust the frequency, unsurprisingly, of the voltage controlled oscillator. In the modulation section, the envelope amount control sets the amount that the envelope follower is applied to the VCO frequency. The FM amount control is used for setting the amount of the drive signal that frequency modulates the VCO. and the mix control sets the balance of drive signal to VCO signal. In the centre of the plugin, you have the usual drive, output and link controls, and you also have level and envelope LEDs. There's also a single foot switch button to turn the effect on or off. Up top are the usual Mogar Fogar settings, a preset bank, and CV options. The Cluster Flux, careful now, is a flanger and a chorus and a vibrato and a delay all rolled into one. An incredibly versatile effect, you can generate some truly mad sounds with this one. 
In the delay section, the time control sets the length of delay. With the switch below set to flange, this can range from 0.5 milliseconds to 10 milliseconds. With the switch set to chorus, this can range from 5 milliseconds to 50 milliseconds. The feedback control sets the amount of delay output fed back into the input of the delay. In the LFO section, the waveform control selects the LFO waveform. There are six waveforms available. Sine, triangle, square, sawtooth, ramp, and random stepped waveforms. The rate control sets the frequency of modulation and the amount control sets the overall amount of modulation. In the middle you have the usual drive output and link controls, plus there's a mix control and level LED. There are LFO sync and active foot switch buttons here too. You'll find the presets for this effect up top as per usual. plus advanced settings and your CV options too. Finally, we have the Moger Foger Saturator, the only effect in this new bundle that didn't start life as a physical effect pedal. The MF108S Saturator is a new software-only effect which emerged out of the development of the Moger Foger Effect plugins. It can be used to add subtle warmth or brutal noise to anything you apply it to. In the envelope section, the amount knob determines how much the envelope signal is used to open and close the drive control. The follow rate knob controls the smoothness of the envelope and the sensitivity knob controls how sensitive the envelope is. In the middle you have the usual drive, output and link controls, as well as level and envelope LEDs. In the noise section, the tone circuit is a two-pole passive filter, whose function depends on the filter type chosen in the settings menu. That's the wee cog icon up the top there. Either low pass, band pass, notch or high pass. Depending on the filter type, the tone knob controls the filter frequency. The colour switch chooses the colour of noise sent to the tone section. White noise has a flat spectrum, while red noise falls off by 6 decibels per 
onto it. The envelope amount knob controls the amount of the envelope applied, unsurprisingly, and there's a single active foot switch button at the bottom here. Again, you have access to presets at the top of the MF Saturator's UI. Plus, you'll find your settings menu and CV options up here too. All of the Moger Foger apps are fantastic effects in their own right, but that's only half the story. The original Moger Foger pedals were designed with connectivity in mind, and these apps are no different. By opening the CV controls in any Moger Foger pedal, you can hook up specific parameters from another Moger Foger pedal present in your project and have it control parameters in your currently selected. Moger Foger pedal. For example, I have a drum and a synth trap loaded up in this Logic Pro for iPad project. I have the MF101 filter loaded up on the synth track, and if I tap on either the top of the plugin or the CV button in the menu at the top, I can access what would in real life be the back of the pedal. You can see I have four inputs here, and these are the parameters that are available to be controlled by another Moger Foger app. If I jump across to the drum track, I have another instance of the filter applied here. Now, I don't really want the filter effect applied to this drum track but I do want it to affect the filter cutoff of the Moger Foger filter I have applied to my synth track. So I'll deactivate the effect on this track and jump back across to my synth track. Back on my synth tracks filter, if I tap on the cutoff input in the CV section, I can select from loads of different options in this menu. Now, this could easily become really confusing if you have five or six or more different Moger Foger effects loaded up across multiple tracks in a project. So each instance has a unique four character code attached to it. So if I jump back to my drum tracks filter really quickly and open the CV section, I can see that its code is UNOO. Back on my Synth Moger Foger filter, when I tap the cutoff input, I can spot that same code, UNOO, so I know that's the effect I'm linking. So clever and so useful. I can link that Moger Foger's envelope parameter to this Moger Foger's cutoff parameter. Now, when I play that back, You can see here the cutoff being automated by the other pedal's envelope control. If I jump back over to the filter Moger Foger on the drum track, I can increase the effect by pumping up the drive and output controls, and can even slow down the envelope with the follow rate control. Jumping back over to the synth tracks filter, I can also have the cutoff frequency be negatively affected. Turning this knob to the left creates an almost sidechain like effect.
The sky really is the limit here, and you can link up multiple different Mogar Fogar effects into different other multiple Mogar Fogar effects to create some really wild results. This works great in any iOS DAW, but it's especially useful in something like GarageBand, where the only automation we have access to built into the app is volume automation. Really powerful stuff. Moog's Moger Foger apps are available today on the App Store. They go for $9.99 each, or you can get a bundle which contains all of them for $39.99. Considering you'll pay up to $79 for one of these on desktop, I think that's a pretty good deal. Thanks again to Moog for partnering up for this epic video. Let me know your thoughts on these new Moger Foger effects down in the comments. And if you found this video at all helpful, give that like button a wee slap on the way past. I really appreciate it. And if you're still in the mood to check out even more excellent iOS music making apps, watch this next. <laughs>